chapter two. All right, module two. So uh, we had left off uh, in our last class. What were we doing in our last class? Yes, so we were working our way through the scientific method. Working our way through the scientific method. We've talked about um, uh, generating theories and hypotheses. We've talked about how we turn interesting questions from observations or case studies into a theory and then we put that to the test. We talked about designing and performing the study and, and we started off our conversation by talking about point number five, communicating the results because I, I said by the time we get to the end of one, two, three, four, we were going to not want to have to then chatter on about five. So we talked about five already. So this is the last one, examining the data. So making sense of the results. So you've got all this data, you've collected all this data from your participants and now you've got to do something with it. And there are all kinds of really fancy things that we can do with data. We have been working on developing statistical procedures for making sense out of large collections of data. We've been working on developing these for you know, over a hundred years within just within the field of psychology and then statistics th themselves are older than that. Um, and this is generally, for the most part, what you're going to do when you're doing your fourth year thesis project in psych. And, and in some of the other social sciences, too, they do very similar things. So uh, when you're doing your fourth year th thesis project, you'll be collecting data. You'll have this big spreadsheet full of data. And now you get to crunch some numbers, play around. And to be honest, because you are going to be a psych geek, you are going to actually, and you're not going to, you don't think it now because maybe you're going through second year stats or third year stats and you're thinking, I hate stats. But when, it, when it's your own data for your own thesis project and you're staring at the spreadsheet, you're going to be so geeked out about having your own data that you've collected that you will play with the data. You will play with statistics. It, you, maybe you don't think you will now, but when you get to that point, you will. Uh, trust me, you will. It's fun to play around and to you know, run some extra tests that weren't part of your hypotheses. And then your faculty advisor will say, well, no, because they're not part of our hypothesis. We can't do anything about that. Uh, but you're still going to play anyway. Um, so um, our sample, that's the group of participants in our actual study. right? Those are the people we actually tested. And then rarely are we really interested in just our sample. Every now and then, sometimes it does happen. Um, you know, maybe Carleton University is perhaps interested in the first year university experience. And maybe we, we collect data from every first year student on campus. And because it's such a, a focused group that we're interested in, we actually are able to collect data from every person in that group. But rarely are we able to do this. You know, if you're the government of Canada and you're interested in you know, understanding something about you know, who are the people in your country, um, uh, you, it's really tough to sample everybody in the country. And so we often do um, uh, you know, take very selected samples. And there's all kinds of fancy uh, procedures that the StatsCan people go through for uh, choosing and picking um, and the methods behind how they choose and pick uh, who's going to be part of, the, uh, part of the sample. So we're not necessarily always interested in just our sample. We want to be able to extrapolate the findings out of the sample to that larger population. The larger population, that's the group that you're really interested in. And you, as the researcher, you get to decide who is your population of interest. You might be interested in everyone in Canada. You might be interested in everyone in the world. Maybe you're interested in finding out something about all first year university students at Carleton. Maybe you're interested in finding something about all first year university students in Canada. Maybe you're interested in finding out something about all university students in Carleton or in Canada, so on and so forth. So you're deciding who is your population of interest. And, um, uh, and then there's you know, issues around the size of the population that you're trying to extrapolate to. You want to make sure that your sample that you're collecting is somewhat representative of that larger population. We do a, a frightening amount of research on first-year university students because they're fun, because um, they're easy, right? They're, they're a convenient sample for us. Uh, we do a frightening amount of research on first-year university students and then expect that the data that we gather from these first-year university students is going to extrapolate to all people. But in reality, right, first university students aren't like all people, right? There's some unique quirks about them, and that becomes a limitation. 
And to get around that, one of the, one of the things we do is we sample extra de demographic variables about our group, um, and then we would, would do other research that would examine the specific differences between who are these first year university students and who is the large, you know, what are the characteristics of that larger population and how do they differ and so that when we try to extrapolate from the one to the other, we understand some of those inherent differences between the two.